All right, my Bible in 365, brothers and sisters, we have arrived at Peter's letter to the church, and this one is an absolutely incredible one. Now, I want you to understand something. He is writing this to a very specific people group, but it undoubtedly applies to all of us. Now, the story of 1 Peter has to start with the picture created by what was going on with Caesar Nero. Now, of course, I don't need to get into all the details of Peter's ministry and how it started. It's a pretty amazing story when you learn about uh, the moment he was called by God to serve him. And of course, when you learn about him denying the Lord, you remember the story? You remember that whole thing? <laughs> what a uh, uh, an incredibly encouraging moment, actually, because although he betrayed the Lord, it is a reminder that God can use us even when we fail because God himself will never fail. So let's go back here. Peter was a prominent leader in the church. Of course, as Christ resurrected and we know that he ascended, uh, pretty amazing things happened in between. We saw the story of Pentecost that we read about in Acts chapter 2. Peter, of course, giving an absolutely remarkable sermon where thousands of people came to know the Lord. But the story of 1 Peter has to really start right around Caesar Nero. Now, of course, Caesar Nero comes into the picture around 64 AD, and uh, he really pretty much lost his mind. I mean, if you think about it, the Apostle Paul was believed to have preached the gospel to him, and a lot of people actually believe that when he rejected the message of the gospel, um, when Paul spoke to him, that's when he started going crazy. Let me tell you how crazy Caesar Nero went. Caesar Nero was the type of man that was so markedly evil that in order to keep his backyard lit, what he pretty much did was he burned Christians alive in many cases and applied tar to their bodies in order to keep the burning uh, lasting a little bit longer, even though it was excruciatingly painful. And a lot of people tell us through history that he did not mind the sound of screaming Christians. Pretty crazy picture. And then, of course, a lot of people also believe that Caesar Nero burned down all of Rome and actually blamed the Christians for doing it. Now, this set quite a precedent because although the type of widespread persecution that was taking place was not as significant as what was going on in Rome, what happened in Rome happened to be a real precedent-setting moment in that people followed Nero's example and they looked for any occasion they could to persecute Jews. Um, and, and by the way, let me just simply say this. We're not just talking about regular Jews. We're talking about Jews who have come to know the Lord, Messianic Jews, right? So it's kind of an interesting thing when you think about it. And it went from persecuting Messianic Jews to persecuting Christians all around, whether they be Jew or Gentile. And this was one substantial moment in early church history, one that was absolutely terrible, yet it was one where God's power showed in so many different and incredible ways. So when you get into the book of 1 Peter, really the occasion for Peter writing this letter was to encourage a church that was going through a tremendously difficult time, especially in light of the persecution that was actually happening. And so in 1 Peter chapter 1, he talks about the fact that we have this amazing gift that God has given us in our salvation, and the fact that the sufferings that we have really don't mean much in light of all that God has given us. And so it's such a powerful picture that uh, Peter uh, shows us and one that he reminds us of that is so important for our regular everyday living, understanding the rewards that we have of salvation. And of course, as you get into uh, chapter 2 and chapter 3, he makes it very, very clear. We're only here for a temporary amount of time, right? That the time that we spend on this earth really, truly does not matter in light of all of eternity, but it does matter to set the precedent for what happens in all of eternity. And so it's a very, very important thing uh, to contemplate and to think about. And then when you get into chapter four and five, then he begins to talk about the real essence of what it is to be walking through a trial and understanding what it all means. That if you're going through a difficult time, you can find peace 
complete peace in knowing that God is going to be with you and that God is going to walk you through it. And this is exceptionally important considering the moment that they were in. Guys, there was a lot of persecution that was going on and there were a lot of issues that these people were facing that were unlike what most others were actually dealing with. And so there's a lot here. Now, how do we bring this all home? Well, I think it's important. Look, we bring all of this home because... In the time in which we are living, which I believe we're living in the last days, we are undergoing an immense amount of difficulty. We're going through an immense amount of persecution worldwide in many different ways. And some of you, heck, let's not even talk about the persecution that some of you might be going through. Maybe you're just going through a difficult time because of the world in which we live. It's a depressing, discouraging, ugly world that we live in. And yet God says he's got the solution for us. He has the answer. And folks, you can find it all in this letter that Peter writes to the church. This first letter is absolutely incredible. There are so many benefits that come from being able to understand it and know it and recognize what it is that God is saying in the moment. And folks, I can tell you this, you're going to walk away from your study in 1 Peter being absolutely encouraged and blown away. I do have to say this. This is the book right now that I am currently teaching through in my Thursday night midweek, and I am loving every minute of it. I'm almost done, by the way. Uh, we've done something like, uh, I want to say, 12 or 13 studies so far in First Peter. So you can go to jameskadis.com. You can pull those videos, watch those Bible studies. Hopefully they will just bless you and encourage you as you grow in the Lord. There's a lot of really great things that are happening right there. So uh, take it all in, you guys. God is faithful and he's good, and he wants to encourage you in this time. By the way... I want to take a moment to simply say this. I am so deeply thankful to the Lord for all that he's given me. As we are here sitting in that Thanksgiving season, I want to say that not only am I thankful for my family, for my wife, my children, for my extended family at Calvary Chapel Signal Hill, the radio family, the YouTube family, and all the other families that are associated. I'm so thankful for my Bible and 365 family. You guys are amazing. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to do this. I love you, and I am deeply thankful for all that the Lord has done in and through you. And yes, that includes you, Charlie and Erica. We love you guys. Uh, you're a blessing. Keep fighting the good fight, folks.